Welcome to the International Luxury Hotel Association webinar series. I'm Michelle McLean. I'm from Namibia as a business representative for the Alt Hiron List Group and Leisure Group. I'm also a tourism and investment consultant for NIPDB, which is Namibia Investment Promotions Development Board in the President's Office in Namibia, which is in Africa. Hi, everybody. And as I said, welcome to this wonderful webinar today. And our topic is unlocking ancillary revenue opportunities in hospitality and what you need to know. I'll be moderating today and my esteemed panel is Sean Tata, President, Real Time Reservation. Nancy Johns, Senior Vice President, Integrated Marketing and Digital Crescent Hotels and Resorts. And Ryan Smith, Resort Manager, the Seabird Resort and Spa. A very big thank you to Real Time Reservation for sponsoring today's webinar. Thank you so much. And now we'd like to ask Nancy, please, could you introduce yourself? Nancy Johns said I'm a Senior Vice President at Crescent Hotels and Resorts. Uh, focusing on the marketing and digital, and uh, I absolutely love this topic. It's one of my favorites, but started in operations and went to revenue management and now in marketing. So everything I do with Ancillary has that lens, um, and it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Nancy. And over to you, Sean. Hi, my name is Sean Tarter, President of Real-Time Reservation, and we work with hotels to enhance the guest experience, increase revenue, and operation control. Well, thank you very much for bringing us the webinar today. Appreciate it. <laughs> Ryan, uh, you look like you have an amazing job with your background. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Ryan Smith. I'm the resort manager here at a beautiful resort in Oceanside, California, the Seabird Resort and Spa. Um, pleasure to, to have me here. Thank you so much. Um, but yes, I've worked with Hyatt for 15 years now. So um, I've been able to enjoy a lot of properties throughout my career. So uh, and I've been able to work with uh, Sean and uh, previous uh, 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 hotels and properties. So it's, it's nice to see uh, Sean as well. Well, this is such a small, uh, close knit community, and we are so blessed to be working in this industry. I mean, I love it every day. So it's not like it's a job. It's just a lifestyle, which is which is wonderful. And I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts today and sharing ideas with you. Um, so let's kick off. Um, the topic once again is unlocking ancillary revenue opportunities in hospitality and what you need to know. So it's going to be exciting for our listeners today to hear from you, um, Sean. Our first question is, how are hotels driving revenue with ancillary services? And what are some of the innovative ways that you are seeing? Yeah, so I, I would say the first thing is, um, as any business or any business plan, you, you do need to have a plan, a program in place. Um, I think hotels and management companies do a great job in terms of understanding room revenue. But once you go to the ancillary product, I think that's where we really have to look at, um, is the solution fully integrated? So you really want the vendors that, to, uh, make sure the credit cards are integrated. You don't really want vendors holding hotel money. So you want full integration on credit cards where the hotel gets 100% of the revenues up front. And then once the guests arrive on property, you want everything processed to the point of sale. So the revenue teams can really understand what the revenue is. Um, once those two things are in place, that's really where I guess the opportunities exist. So you look at everything from this club, the cabanas, all different types of ancillary opportunities, uh, shuttle service, amenities, things like that. But once you have the integrations in place, um, also you have to make sure that the brands approve the integrations. A lot of a lot of efforts done on the security side to make sure that um, everything is run correctly and make sure that all the guest profiles and information are really secure um, and also secure based globally. Um, looking at GDPR and all that fun stuff in terms of different standards based on country. And I, and I guess one more piece of this is is especially on the on the brand side, the management side, on the owner side, that you want to look at really good. Um, um, reporting. And I think we're seeing a lot more in terms of enterprise reporting. We want to understand how hotels compare to other hotels in the portfolio act. So you, not only is it pricing, we also want to make sure um, if we can add value. So we know that guests want not only value, but also opportunities. So if we can plan our entire trip before we go on vacation. We have a lot of you know itinerary information available to us. So you want the properties to be able to offer all different types of services, uh, connect to other vendors to offer even more services. And as long as we could process it on the operation side, we have a really winning formula. So I think we're looking at enhanced reporting, uh, enhanced yield management as well. 
We want to know not just from a, um, a data standpoint of how many cabanas are being sold. We also want to understand hotel occupancy and how that influences price. So I think we're looking at um, ancillary revenue opportunities. We really want to understand yield management and we call enhanced yield management by understanding more about behaviors, the demographic of who's going to be at the hotel during that time. Is it group business or transient business? Um, is, is it a, a certain weekend that we want to make sure we're, we're pricing things correctly? Um, but we're really seeing a trend now in terms of all hotels offering every type of service you could imagine to guests before they arrive. And then when they're on property, because of real integrations, we're able to upgrade guest experiences um, and really bring guests into more of what the brand and what the hotel really means to that guest experience. Well, thank you so much, Sean. Um, uh, Nancy, do you, can you weigh in on this? Absolutely. I couldn't agree more, Sean. I, I have to tell you that integration and be able to do it from the beginning um, all the way through the process and the, with the rice systems and reporting is incredibly important. But for me, um, we have 120 resorts and um, hotels within the U.S. and Canada. So for me, I see ancillary revenue opportunities everywhere. Like I can't stop seeing them. They're fantastic. Um, so I just wanted to um, share that whether you're doing an, a significant event, like uh, one of our properties in Denver did a great opportunity where they were in, um, did a, did a, a hotel um, pop up for the holidays and ended up being an amazing uh, opportunity where they sold out every night. Um, and now we're trying to top it for next year. So we did that in Denver to uh, capturing a sale in advance for a cabana or for an amenity in, in advance. I think that when you have that seamless operation that goes through to the end, that's when the operations team can then take it and make it a really memorable experience. And I think that's really important. That's that's wonderful insights there. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, but Ryan, over, over to you. Your question is, in what ways can mapping out the guest journey help identify opportunities for streamlining hotel operations and enhancing the overall guest experience? What, what are your thoughts on that? Yes, um, I, you know, for for me, I really from an operation standpoint, uh, we really like to break things down into kind of five categories. And as kind of uh, Sean Nancy or Luntu, pre-arrival is very important uh, part of the process. So we break it down from a pre-arrival standpoint to the arrival, um, then kind of the guest room and amenities, uh, dining and entertainment, and then the checkout. So as we break down um, each one of these categories, we find ways that we can identify the operation, streamline that process, uh, so it is seamless and, and kind of user friendly uh, for our guests um, as they navigate through um, their guest journey. Did you find this changed a lot, Ryan, um, after COVID, um, sort of post COVID? Yes, um, you know, I would say we look at about 90% of our guests are going to go to the website or find some find all that information on the website. So how can we use our technology to our, uh, you know, our best benefit and make sure that they get and they capture all that information right there. And so they can plan out. Um, everybody is planning out their vacations. Um, we're seeing, uh, you know, lots of families uh, traveling together. So making sure that we make that uh, very seamless for them. So yes, we are seeing a lot, um, a lot happening more, um, uh, now with the experiences uh, pre pre planned out. So yeah, we will talk a little bit more about uh, technology a little bit later in the discussion. But uh, Nancy, do you have any thoughts on that? Sure. Looking at it from a digital lens, I kind of see the journey as when the person is still thinking about where am I going, and being able to to provide them experiences and different ways to enhance their stay that they can get at your property that they're not gonna be able to get somewhere else. So really helping that customer from the very beginning while they're dreaming all the way through the process. And as Ryan said, the pre-stay, then once they're on property and all the way through to the end, um, they, they can create their own experience and that allows them to really have their dream vacation that all of us deserve. Uh, Sean, did you did you want to add to that? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I mean, obviously, I couldn't agree more with what Nancy just said in terms of really looking strategically at the guest experience and and something that we're noticing, I guess, more towards trending is, are these packages. You know, can you bring a guest um, where there's a spa treatment, where there's a cabana, where there's a kids club, really all in the same op opportunity? Maybe there's an event ticket as well. So the bundling idea of really creating the guest itinerary together, allowing the guest one way of paying for things is, is just easier for everyone that's involved. And the more complex the journey, uh, I guess the more easy it is for the guests to have all, all things taken care of for them. And I guess I can't really harp on integration enough. You know, when you look at creating these packages, um, and like, I, guess, I guess the integration part is kind of near and dear to us for the past you know, 10 years, really getting into this, uh, you know, dealing with folks at, at Oracle and Agilisys and really understanding the revenue centers and the mappings. You know, it's kind of uh, more on the operation side, but we always found out that if we could fix the operations of the hotels, then the revenue teams can really take hold of what they want. But it has to work on the operation side. You have to understand the operation piece of this. So these complex journeys, you really want to make sure that it's possible that one package or one item has uh, revenue being shared between the retail team, the recreation team, food and beverage teams. And if we could split revenue up in that manner on the back end of the system, it can really help each, each one of the departments of hotels achieve what they want. But ultimately, it's the guest experience that really benefits from the spa and the kids club and the recreation teams all working together and the food and beverage options that can go on top of each each opportunity. So, so talking about that and the personalization, um, th that's really, really important. So how does that contribute to the ancillary revenue growth in the luxury hospitality industry? So what are some of the best practices and strategies that you guys can maybe share with me, Ryan? Yes, uh, again, personalization uh, really does have the power to kind of transform uh, the way we engage with our guests, um, uh, particularly when it comes to driving ancillary revenue growth. So for us at our property level, uh, we do a lot of personalization. Um, we have many activities um, that really, I think, stand out. Um, just from even the arrival standpoint, we, you know, we noticed that you have a a child, we bring out a toy wagon to really make your experience start, you know, from the moment you walk through the doors. Um, then we know that we can start to tailor their experience with, we have a kid's programming, we have, you know, a Build-A-Bear, we've got tie-dye, we've got go down to the beach. Um, so things that right away, if you can start to tailor their uh, experience, that's really what what it comes down to. Um, and then we can drive them to those, you know, those other amenities that we have uh, for the rest of the family. Uh, once we start to learn more about the family and what they're there for. Um, so that's how we really try to um, engage with our our uh, our guests. And, you know, it's a it's the one moment we have to get kind of intimate with our guests and get to know them uh, so we can, um, you know, we can steer them in the right direction to have a memorable experience. Well, you'd certainly become um, the, the parents' best friends when you look after the kids and the time with Absolutely. them. So, and, and Nancy, your experience in this? So so taking what Ryan said, I mean, he's spot on. I mean, I love what you're doing with the wagon. That's fantastic. Um, but a, as you pull through and think of it from a digital lens, how do we how do we find out who these customers are in advance so that we can be prepared to to set those things up operationally to put the right opportunity in front of the right guest um, for example we have horseshoe bay resort outside of austin um, they have all of these very large events they do and they have some very and they have some some of the amenities that can be delivered to your room in advance or or could be you know different ways that we can increase the ancillary revenue some of these big events um, we go out, it's a big country concert, or they do beer by the bay. And these were actually their weekends that were the slowest weekends for the hotel. And they've created these opportunities for ancillary revenue. So not only do they fill the hotel now on a weekend that is slow, they're also getting this ancillary revenue. They work with a lot of sponsorships. There's a really big opportunity for all of us to make more revenue. And in using the tools that, again, allow us to pull that through and make it easy and be able to come back on the at the end of the at the end of the event and be able to see what we produced and where we excelled and where our revenue streams really came from. That's what makes the six success for everybody. So, so Sean, um, how can technology and data streamline hotel operations um, and elevate the guest experience and drive revenue? 
Yeah, so I, I think we're also noticing a, a pretty good trend in terms of hotels procuring more and more events themselves, more and more services themselves as well. Um, guests tend to feel a more a trusted connection with the property. So if the property would offer them an experience versus a distribution or an OTA for um, you know for activities or an OTA that might handle or, or kind of you know bring in large tours and operators things like that. I think guests would prefer to work with the property directly. So you have that kind of trust experience, also a big push towards loyalty points um, and any kind of experience where there's some benefit of working directly with the hotel. So I think with technology, properties are able to really reach out to the guests. And you know, just like Ryan said, there's a tremendous amount of traffic organically just pr produced by the, by the property's website. We're seeing that in terms of parking, where guests are reserving parking ahead of time, cabanas ahead of time, activities ahead of time. You have a guest with a, almost a fear of missing out. If they don't hurry up and, and get the massage treatment, it might be sold out. Um, so you really want to provide activities and opportunities on your website. Uh, just have organic traffic coming in naturally as opposed to paying for you know, kind of an OTA experience. And then we also see how technology helps in terms of uh, managing um, I would say no shows as well as producing um, kind of kind of credit card receipts. So something that we really believe is a best practice is that we connect the activities with the hotel's current uh, credit card gateway. So whether you've met here like Freedom Pay or Alavon, Shift 4, all those are very high integrations. We're seeing also enhanced integrations with 3DS, which is coming to the US uh, very soon, uh, but it's, it's Latin America and Europe as well. So you wanna make sure the credit card integration is perfect so the guests can pay for things in advance. So they actually show up to all the events that they purchased ahead of time. And then obviously the opportunity with the point of sale when they get there. So a lot of times technology is able to help the hotel with reduced staff these days um, to process transactions, also offer guests all these amazing things. If you have an amenities menu that are available for guests ahead of time, they don't need to call the hotel and get um, something for their friend's big event, like a, a birthday party or an anniversary. They can do everything online. Um, and I think COVID sped up that by at least five years or longer. And it's across demographic. It used to be that people in certain demographics, they didn't have access to phones, or um, it might've been an age cap where certain age, you know, ages didn't go on phones. And now all of a sudden with COVID, um, everyone's using their phones. Uh, my little kids are using phones and, and, and grandparents are using phones. So it's, it's something where uh, the technology is available, people are comfortable using it. And now it's the hotels to see what they could offer guests in a trusted way. Um, where their credit card actual statement says the hotel's name on it, as opposed to a vendor's name on it. So all these things are kind of related to technology, but it's really up to the hotel's creative team to see what kind of experience they want to offer their guests. So, so Nancy, what has your experience been on, on that level? So um, for us, I, I think that the technology can make a huge difference. It's um, the customer doesn't know everything that you have unless you're able to pull it through in a way that gives them the opportunity to create their own experience. Um, and, and that experience needs to be really what they're looking for because not everybody's looking for the same thing out of the same trip, even if they're coming to the same property. So for example, at our PGA National Resort, um, we have everything from kids camp to a honeybee experience. So the honeybee experience is actually really fun. You go with a professional beekeeper, you get to go and look at um, the bees, see the queen bee, do all the things, you get all the Instagram pictures while you're there. Uh, but that's an experience that that not only allows us to make money with a with a partner through that program, we also have a, they taste the honey, the raw honey before they leave. And then we have those products, not only in our restaurants that are using that same honey, but also in many of the other outlets, including gift shops. So I think the technology is the piece that pulls it all together, right? It gets the customer excited about the opportunities that are out there to craft their own, their own thing. And I'll tell you, I agree with you, Sean, having the technology that pulls all the way through from an operations standpoint to the end uh, makes all the difference and, and makes it so much easier to activate your property. That's very insightful information, which I think everybody in the industry should know. Um, Ryan, but uh, how does a positive guest experience relate to ancillary re revenue and what strategies can hotels employ to ensure that positive experience for guests? Yeah, you know, when I kind of look at this, I, you know, when guests have a good experience at the hotel, they tend to spend more money. Um, so they'll, you know, maybe they'll order room service and they'll, they'll add, you know, maybe 
buy that bottle of wine. Um, and, and so as we continue to, to build on that positive guest experience, um, then we go to the next one, have a good experience, then they become a repeat, uh, repeat customer for us. Um, and then they, because they're a repeat customer, now they're loyal to us. So as you kind of go through the, the kind of the, um, the connection with our guest experience and you, you make sure that they're having these wow moments through all these ancillary um, uh, experiences, it just really continues to build that loyalty. And of course, we all know that uh, people talk and they they talk to their friends, they talk to their families, they start, then it starts to really uh, drum up uh, why that property is is really the place to go. We can go anywhere and get the same experience. If I go to you know LA, I might be getting the same experience at five different hotels, but what are you gonna do to make that wow moment? Um, and so that's really what's gonna set you apart. So having that good, customer experience from the get-go is gonna, gonna really help you drive uh, future business. Sean, Nancy, would you like to add to that? Sean, do you wanna go first? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just fascinating hearing you know from from you know, different perspectives and and um, you know obviously when you, when you work with you know great great resorts and and you know when everything Ryan says is so so spot on in terms of the personalization, uh, really the ability for guests to feel like they're part of something. Um, it's an interesting concept when you speak to revenue teams and you speak to the guest experience teams of how they they are related. You know, so it's almost as if if you could handle things operationally, if you could work with the you know the revenue teams to understand that. It's not that you're charging the guests more money for something because the guests might perceive value as, as more spending money. It's that the guests have an idea of this is their vacation opportunity and they really want to focus on creating this once in a lifetime experience. So you have the management teams and the hotels really getting behind this guest experience. Um, and just like, you know, just like Ryan, you said about, you know, the, the better bottle of wine, the bottle of champagne. You know, the, the experience, they might say, hey, we're all together for the first time in, you know, a year. So we're really, really out of COVID as well. We haven't been together for three years. We're finally together. What can we all do together? And what does the hotel have to offer? So I think it's a lot of creating these experiences and getting very personal with what the guests want to do and each member of the guests as well. If, and if I can kind of jump on that, I think part of that is start small. Um, you don't always have to go for the Hail Mary. And I think that's really what it comes down to is, you know, luxury and all these experiences can be found at every level. So as you kind of go through uh, looking at ways to find it, you don't have to go for, again, some big grand experience. You can find these small, um, small little experiences here and there that really does make an impact as you listen to your guests and personalize that experience. I'd agree, Ryan. I, I mean, when you look at the opportunities that are in front of you, there are some that are very easy operationally start there. You know, whether it's a small amenity and you're going to offer two or three selections and they're already preset so that it's very easy operationally to make them happen. When you have a system that allows the customer and the journey they've booked, they kind of come back to the website, they're looking what they're going to do, whether they're, they can see all these different things they can pre-book in advance. It, it can, you can make it very easy. Don't go to those really high complex things right away, you know, but you'll be amazed at how much ancillary revenue it is. And, and just like Brian said, in the digital journey, the customer will, will purchase multiple times if you if we give them the right delivery, right? So you've, you've booked the reservation and then maybe there's a pre-stay that's a, you know, maybe it's a month out. And so maybe there's a pre-stay that kind of tells you some ideas of things they can do. And then as they get closer, you can communicate some other things that are going to be happening on property that might be events that they can, they can join or, or purchase. And, and you can continue that journey using the same tool all the way across the journey and, and including mm -hmm. while they're in house. So I, I completely agree with you, Ryan. Um, great, great thing to call out. Yeah, and, and even as we're seeing you know, different types of, of guests and, and, you know, we're seeing a lot with video games these days and, and you know, families are outside and all of a sudden children want to play video games and, and adults do as well. So you could be in a beautiful resort uh, on, on a beach like, like what's, you know, Ryan's behind you, that, that picture there, and children want to play video games. Um, but at the same time, we're seeing properties say, okay, here's your video game time um, and we'll create a package for you, produce video games and, and, and a gaming system. Uh, but then also there might be a s'mores movie night and that's a chance that the whole family can get together. So if you really look at 
um, individual experiences, like Nancy was alluding to before, about you know, each, each member of the family wanting to do something different. Uh, but then you also have chances where you can get collaborative events where, you know what, everyone will do something for a few hours by themselves, maybe, or in groups, uh, by, based on the, you know, children versus adults, things like that. You have spa treatments and kids club. Then you also have a movie night or a you know, bonfire outside and the family gets together, have that bonding experience. It's, it's a nice way to do it. And obviously there's a tremendous revenue attached to procuring all this experience for the guests and kind of walking them through what the property has to offer and also what the surroundings have to offer. And a lot of times you might have a, a, you know, a good situation with a beach ordinance where you actually can do things on the beach or you know, someplace you can do things by the pool area. Um, everything's always based on operations. Do you have the staff to do it at certain times? But if you do, it is nice to have uh, Monday night football and you have in a cabana, you multi-purpose it to have, you know, wings and, and, and more of an adult situation. You have 12 people in a cabana versus four during the day and you have a more lively experience with TVs and things like that. So you have different abilities to attract different groups of people or the entire family or different friends that might want to hang out together. That's that's a really that's a really important point, Sean. That yeah, that's you know something, um, Nancy. That that I was thinking about as well. And just a question for you. You know, what are the opportunities then, and the trends that you're seeing? So, if you want to share case studies, maybe some examples of successful innovation solutions for enhancing the luxury guest experience, and and how have they impacted the guest satisfaction and and that feedback and loyalty? I think when you're looking at at putting together a, an activation and, and doing all of these things, um, you have to keep the customer in mind first. Sometimes you can watch your customer and they will tell you exactly what they're looking for, right? So use that use that knowledge to create the experience for the next guest coming in. Use that information um, and, and test and try. Um, I will tell you that the reporting on the, the back end is really important because you can see, hey, we did do a campfire. We actually did the campfire for free, but then we sold the s'mores and maybe we had bottles of wines. And maybe we had all these other things. And you look at that experience that was a simple opportunity for the family to get together like Sean put, put out there. That, that allows you to then capture um, a lot of uh, ancillary revenue. Um, I think it's the, the, when I think about where my favorite places to go, it's all about the experience I had. The hotel creating an experience that made me feel special, right? Made my family feel special, made my husband feel special. Whatever it is, if I'm with my girlfriends, do they feel, do we remember this and always talk about the same trip? That's what will connect you to them and that will bring that loyalty through. Yeah, that's that's certainly my experience as well. That's that's incredible. Um, you know, we we often look at the technology side and we think, you know, that's really, really important. It's going to drive revenue. But how do you strike that balance, that human touch? You know, like you were saying earlier, Ryan, the, the personalization. So how do you strike that happy balance between technology and obviously being very personal and that human touch? Um, I hand it over to you, Ryan. <laughs> yes, um, absolutely. Uh, you know, it is one of those things that you got to make it easy to use. The platform's got to be, um, you know, integrated as as Sean says, seamless, um, and and make it so. Um, yeah, you have to you know have that ease of use from the guest standpoint. So uh, so that way, if it's a QR code, it could quickly be used, but. Your staff is also able to quickly book um, those things for the guest um, from a uh, from a, a like a check in standpoint. Like, oh, I saw this experience. Um, how do I do that? Instead of always just directing them to a website, how can you make sure that both sides are balanced uh, so that way it's also easy for the um, the associate to book that experience and and speak to it. Um, so. Uh, again, as we listen to our guests and we we can kind of really tailor uh, make those experiences. So, um, yeah, you definitely have to find the balance and not just send everybody to a, you know, a single platform. You got to be able to kind of uh, use both. And so it's easy for both uh, the front end and the back end user. So, so I'm just very curious. So do you have like a survey system where you go into the, the feedback from the guests? Yes, uh, we have a very intense survey uh, system that we uh, we do in a lot of ways. Um, uh, we're, you know, with Hyatt Hotels, you know, we we rank ourselves against 175 other properties in our own uh, subset over just of like hotels. 
um, to get that guest feedback, um, not only as a trend in the area, but also uh, granularly in our property. So we're able to see that feedback firsthand. Uh, additional ways that we reach out, uh, we have a text platform that's very approachable uh, for our guests to quickly uh, communicate with us. Um, and then again, the, the standard email uh, uh, upon your departure to kind of get that feedback. So we can, you know, make the tweaks and changes to that um, experience. So we definitely uh, thrive on our guest feedback. Um, and then on the back end, we do, uh, we do colleague feedback as well. You know, what can we do? Do you have the tools um, to do your job and do all these things? So we constantly are getting feedback um, and finding ways to make that experience better uh, on both sides. Thanks, Ryan. Um, any final thoughts on that, uh, Nancy and Sean? Sure. Well, um, first, Nancy. I think Ryan, you, you, you're, you're spot on. When I think of the technology and how it helps us personalize in a luxury setting, the technology allows us to, to get great information, all the information we need. It puts it in front of the customer and makes it customer makes it easy for them to use and makes it easy for us to execute. And we can put all those personal touches that you would expect at a luxury hotel, the little surprises, the things that they're maybe not anticipating that, that allow that operations piece to be special and, and really pull it through. Um, but people are looking for the technology. They want the information now. They, they want to be able to gather it themselves 90% uh, of the time, but they might see it on the website, but then come to the front desk as Ryan said, and ask. So that front desk clerk has to be able to be going to a platform that's very easy and can be able to pull through that bottle of wine all the way up to ordering it by the in the food and beverage POS, right? And, and then also make sure that it's charging the customer. So um, have, having this technology allows us more time to spend on that customer experience for me. And, and Sean, your thoughts? Yeah, I would just say that, you know, I guess back to technology, what, what really affords the hotel. So you, you have different opportunities that are present here, whether it's other vendors or whether it's a food and beverage option. It, it might might be a personalized birthday cake, but it takes the chef three days to create it. So you need to have lead time in your technology to say that people that see this three days before, you know, that's fine. But if you seeing if you log on to the website day of, you wouldn't see that option. And by giving the, the in this case, the chef that kind of opportunity. So I can offer all these things to, to guests ahead of time. You see the same thing with boating. If, if maybe the property says within three days, I can get any type of uh, any type of boat that, I, that the guests would want. So let me offer everything three days before, four days before, but day of, I want to offer that opportunity. Um, you see a lot of times, even on the food and beverage side, certain bottles of, of alcohol, right? So you say, if I have 24 hours notice, I can get anything I, like I could imagine. Um, and maybe the guests would actually purchase that because it's a special opportunity for them. So I think lead time is really important. Technology affords that. I think enhanced skilled management is also really important. And really just forecasting. If I know a certain amount of guests are coming to the kids club, for instance, I know that in certain states I have a requirement that you know, I think for every five children, I need one staff member. Um, but if it's a convention that day, I might not need anyone in the kids club. I might want to repurpose that staff member just to some other part of the property. Um, so you really have the ability on the operation side to completely control everything. And then I have to see the revenue teams get a hold of uh, really enhanced yield management, looking at occupancy of hotels, not just of the actual activity, and really build a program. And of course, the ownership team seem to really like it, knowing ahead of time that I have this amount of revenue coming in, and it's fully paid for with a credit card. And there is a cancellation policy for everything, just like a hotel room. So you really build kind of a, st a structure for total revenue management, kind of like you do for hotel rooms, but now it's for everything else. Um, but you also see a lot of opportunities to create more and more um, vendors. Um, so you see where you might have a, a basketball coach that says, you know, if you can get five people, I'll show up at the property or a tennis pro, things like that. So you really have an opportunity with a lead time to say, well, now I have from when the guest actually books the room reservation until when the guest arrives, what can I offer that guest? And how many vendors can I work with to see what opportunities I can offer that guest? Maybe it's, you know, wedding photography, things like that, tours, private tours. You know, I love the example, Nancy, of the, of the beekeepers uh, and, and the, the, the honeybees because you might even have an opportunity to have a personalized class. So if they could have, you know, three or four people, that, that vendor might or that property might really want to have a private event. 
um, if I can get a certain amount of people. If I have a certain amount of lead, I could I could get the staff to actually have this event. So we really just see an opportunity with technology to have reservations, um, uh, credit cards to actually ensure the guests are arriving. And then I can't stress enough the importance of point of sale integration, uh, micro symphony and agility, infogenesis and you know in for point of sale. All these point of sales are so important because the properties are used to working with them on the revenue side. Um, and also the guests are used to having them in terms of adding a gratuity to things uh, during the checkout process. Those, those are fantastic ideas as well. And yeah, thank you so much to all of you for being on the panel today, to Nancy, Ryan, Sean, um, for this topic, which was really, really in insightful, unlocking ancillary revenue opportunities and hospitality and what everybody needs to know. But um, any final comments before we close off? Unfortunately, we've run out of time. I would love to sit here all day with you guys. In fact, I'd like to sit where Ryan's sitting right now. But <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just any final thoughts before we close off? I just say always make a plan. Start with a plan. Uh, follow through with all the details, make sure all the departments that are are going to be involved are involved from the beginning because that will get you buy-in all the way to the end. Then at the end, do a recap. All the things that went great and maybe the things that you might want to do differently, that recap is incredibly valuable. You may end up using those ideas for your next idea um, and wish you all the best in making more money. And Ryan, any final thoughts? Um, no, again, I think... Um... Uh, you know, again, investment in technology obviously can significantly enhance the guest experience, experience while improving those operational efficiencies uh, throughout the hotel operations. So um, again, go so start small and uh, don't go for the Hail Mary um, and you uh, good luck to everyone. Thank you for joining us today at the International Luxury Hotel Association webinar series. It's been really, really insightful. And if you'd like to share this webinar, please do so. Uh, the recordings of the webinars can be found on the ILHA's website, theilha.com. So please join us.